So what would you say like to new agents? Like you started 11 years ago and now you went through the crash and now you're, you know, moved like twice, two or three times. Like you started over in different markets. Like yeah. you have tons of experience. Like you have been through the worst market as basically a new agent. You went to different markets, which a lot of agents ask me about, you know, like, I'm moving to a new area. What should I do? And stuff like that. What would you say to somebody who is having is having to move to a new area? How do you get started? Like, what do you do? How do you how do you operate? How do you stay positive? How do you you know, how do you do it? Well, I would say whether you're new or moving to a new area. Melody, what is up? Not much. How's it going? <laughs> So just so you guys know how this all came to be, um, Melody, follow me on Instagram. Your broker said to? Yes. Okay. So her broker said to, to follow me on Instagram and I reached out to her and said, how are you doing and stuff? And then I literally asked her because she's been in business for 11 years, like what their secret is. And then she gave me this paragraph of basically exactly what I would have said. And I was like, what? I got to have you on my podcast. So. Tell me exactly, like, give me a little background, like your story, how you got in real estate and like, give me the whole thing. I want to hear about it. Okay. So I have been a realtor for 11 years. Prior to that, I was in the Navy for eight and a half years. So mm -hmm. got out, was living in Hawaii, uh, decided I was going to sell real estate, started my career there, um, sold in Hawaii from 2007 to 2011. Then uh -huh. my my husband was still in the military. We transferred to San Diego. Then I went to work for um, one of the number one agents uh, in San Diego. I think she might be like number five in the world or something kind of crazy. Uh, I had some mm. good mentorship there. Moved back to Hawaii. The husband retired. Then we moved home to Texas with his family. So there's kind of been, there's been some shifts in starting over and learning areas and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, and that brings you to today. So what I really want to know is, is like, we're okay. Basically when I asked you what your secret was, you were like, it's all about the people and, and da, 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 da. Like basically everything that I say and preach. So my question is like, how did you come to that conclusion? Like, how did you, did you, were you like that from day one or like, did you go through some life change or, was there something no. that happened or what was there a mind shift somewhere or what? Tell me about this. So when I first started to sell real estate, I think that I thought it was easy, uh, mainly just because I had purchased a few properties of my own. You know, you make money on them and you're like, oh, the realtor, I'm not even sure what they're doing, this and that. And you think it's so easy, right? So I get into the business. Uh, turns out it's not that easy. I got really lucky. I had a sale within the first 30 days. Thereafter, I didn't have any sales for six months and it was all my fault because every person that came across my desk, I was chasing them and I wasn't, I wasn't making it about them. It was more like I'm trying to get the sale and I want to get this thing closed and it showed. So one day I was just at open house and I was like, you know what? Enough of this. I'm not going to try and sell myself to anyone. The first person that walks through the door, I just ask him, you know, to him and his wife, how are you doing today? How's it going? Mm -hmm. We just start talking story. I'm like, what'd you do this weekend? They went to the beach. We start connecting. And then from that point on, it was like, oh, I see. I can't sell to everyone. Like this is not, you don't just sell. You have to get to know someone. So I probably spent the next like 45 minutes talking to those people. Um, ended up picking them up at an open house and sold them something 45 days later. So yeah. from that point on, I just put in my practice, get to know the people. Don't be desperate. People see it. They know it, mm -hmm. get to know mm -hmm. them. So from that point on, then it just grew. And then I started to get to know that guy's friends and then that guy's friends. And then we all just kind of got to know each other and it, it all just grew from that point on. It was never, um, from that point on, I'm telling you, it was never about the sales. It was like, I just want to know you. What can I do? Yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, Oh, this stuff is working. So first year, uh, like I said, had a sale within the first 30 days, then six months later, got tired of it, had three or four more sales after that. And then the next year I went on to be 
one of my office top producers by asking people how they were doing and how I could help them rather than, are you pre-qualified? What do you want to do? What are you looking for? You know, do you have an agent? That's yeah. how it all started, you know, just trial and error. And then I figured it out and it worked. So I mean, isn't it crazy? So like, at what point was so so at so at the beginning it was kind of about the deal and about mm -hmm. the the money and the closings and then you had this open house like what what happened like was there like did you just say I'm tired of living like this or or did you like well there was a huge shift in the market you gotta think I was in the West Coast in Hawaii mm -hmm. and this was 2007 when I started mm -hmm. so it was all short sales and REOs forecasted in the future. And, you know, I didn't know that. The only thing I knew was I got a license and I'm a realtor. So when you're talking, you know, mid, you know, going into 2008 and the market was a total crash, like mm -hmm. I really had to help people because there were people that they bought their homes, you know, a year before, and then they're 300,000 under, they can't pay their bills. They've got these adjustable rate mortgages and it was no longer selling. It's like, I actually have to help you. So mm -hmm. I had no choice. It was like, if you want to be successful, you have to find a way to help these people rather than selling, you know? So I think yeah. it was the the market that kind of forced it. If you want to know the truth, I mean, it was either get in and get with it or get out. That That's just how you have to do business. So, yeah. You know, that's what happened to me too. That's like how I figured it out was because the market crashed on me, but you were lucky enough to figure it out while you were still in the, like you never had to get out of the business, right? What's that, Ricky? I'm sorry. You, ne you never had to like get out of the business. Right? No, 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 no. But I've definitely had gaps in business when we moved and it felt like I got out of the business because you later on, I was an experienced agent trapped in basically a new person's body starting over mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. new markets, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that is so interesting. We kind of had the same path there. You started later than me, but you the market crash and then you learned it was relationships over transactions and then that changed everything. And now <clears throat> that's how you make it through a market crash. Like, you know, changing it from transactional to relational for sure. So like, give me some like meat, meat and potatoes of, of what you do. Like, like how do you, how do you create business? Do you do like for sub owner expires, buyer leads, cold calling, you know, sphere of influence, what's your bread and butter? So a little bit of everything. So um, I basically, I sum it up and just say it's good order and discipline with everything every day. So from basically 8.30 to 11 every morning, I'm either calling people from my sphere of influence, even the ones in San Diego and Hawaii, because I'm still getting those referral fees on the back end, referring them to people that will take good care of them because they knew that I would take care of them. Um, stand open house at least three times a month. Um, I am doing Zillow, which I know there's a big, a lot of people don't like that, but it works for me. So yeah. I do that. Um, and I haven't called on any expires in a long time, mm -hmm. but I actually have said that I'm going to start doing that again this year because when I worked in, um, San Diego, that was also 2011. It was kind of where it started coming back up and I worked on this big team and we had this big prospecting room that was the size of a real estate office. And I go in and call a uh, notice of defaults and expires all of that every day. So uh, I have some experience with it. I just haven't done it in a long time because open house and Zillow work well for me, especially open house, because that's kind of like Macy's someone's in there shopping. So they're in there for something. So why not just spend three hours there to meet people? So, you know, like you said, it's whatever works. I mean, mm -hmm. that sounds like almost opposite of what I would do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know. I would probably just say, you know, um, I don't live in San Diego or, or, or Hawaii anymore. And, you know, I'm going to concentrate on my area. So I probably wouldn't do that. And then I wouldn't do, certainly wouldn't do for sale. But I mean, uh, open houses or Zillow, but <laughs> it's such an interesting like business because everything works. Like yeah. as long as you have the attitude of what in the world can I do for you? And you're like a hard worker and you know what I'm saying? You want the best for people and you realize how to communicate that, mm -hmm. then you're going to succeed whether you do Zillow leads or you know, like, it doesn't matter what, what you do because the Zillow lead buys something. And then now you have a relationship with a new property owner 
who's going to refer three people to you and then resell that property and buy another one, you know, in, in you know, seven years. So no, I mean, you can do it any, like there's not a right or wrong way. There's a doing it or not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a realtor for everyone. So at the end of the day, you know, I mean, if you've got a name and phone number in front of you, whether it's Zillow, whether it's, you know, expires for Red X or whatever, you know, maybe not every person is a good fit for me. They might be a better fit for Ricky. You know, I don't yeah. know, but it's just reaching out and being human because people yeah. work with people. They don't want to work with salespeople like attracts. Yeah. So, yeah. So what would you say you're out of the, all of that? Do you have like a main source of business? Like, would you say Zillow produces the most or open houses or Hawaii or what's your main source you so, think? Or is it pretty I, equal? I would say it's pretty equal. Um, Zillow and open house is over 50%. Uh, I do yeah. get some, you know, some company leads every now and then some relocation. I am in the greater Houston area. We have the biggest energy corridor. It'd be crazy not to work that stuff. You know, so yeah. some stuff from them, but I, only company stuff is maybe 35% yeah. of my business and the rest of the stuff, I'm just out getting it on my own. And this is only my second full year working in Texas. So now I'm starting to get repeat business and referrals. So I'm not having to work as hard on some of the other stuff with like Zillow and open house because it's already yeah. coming around full circle. So right. yeah. what's your, what's your like somebody who, you know, somebody you show property to that doesn't buy or, you know, an open house person that, you know, you created a relationship with, but, you know, decided they didn't want to do anything for a couple of years or wasn't too serious or whatnot. What is your follow up process with those kind of people? So I have them, well, I have them, of course, like on the regular, you know, monthly newsletter, email drips. They're getting something from me. They know mm -hmm. that I'm alive. But I put yeah. a reminder in my database, you know, every six weeks or so, make a phone call, send an email, reach out, see how they're doing. And actually right now I have a guy that's an escrow that perfect example, I met him in 2017 and he's just now in escrow in early 2019, just by, mm -hmm. you know, taking that time in the morning and remaining disciplined during my prospecting hours and going through and go, oh, okay. Michael, I haven't talked to him in six weeks. He did say that he'd be moving here late 2018, you know, and just sticking to it, following right. through. So. Yeah. That's the name of the game. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to have something that like makes your business like glue. Like mine's a weekly email. I do a weekly report every Wednesday and like I have 13,000 people that get it and like, you know, 2,500, yeah. like 2,500 to 3,000 open it up. And it's like property owners in the area and stuff like yeah. that. Yes. And like, and like, uh, that's the glue because I'll talk to somebody five years ago and then, you know, they, I, I kind of forget who they are cause it's been so long, but they've been getting my email and then they call me and say, I've been getting your email for five years. I'm ready to do something, you know, buy or sell something. Mm -hmm. And you got to have that glue. Like, you know, like one thing is communication and like connecting with people on the spot and over the phone. And the other part is, What's that glue that holds it all together and keeps people, keeps you in front of people? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would you say like to new agents? Like you started 11 years ago and now you went through the crash and now you're, you know, moved like twice, two or three times. Like you started over in different markets. Like yeah. you have tons of experience. Like you have been through the worst market as basically a new agent, you went to different markets, which a lot of agents ask me about, you know, like I'm moving to a new area. What should I do? And stuff like that. What would you say to somebody who is having, is having to move to a new area? How do you get started? Like, what do you do? How do you, how do you operate? How do you stay positive? How do you, you know, how do you do it? Well, I would say whether you're new or moving to a new area, First off, it's mindset. So don't deviate from anything that you want. Uh, and understand that our job at the end of the day, it's not a job, it's a career. So you have to stick with it and not quit. But um, also understand it's not rocket science. You can have a high school diploma and do this. It doesn't require a master's degree or a doctorate. Like, don't overcomplicate it. So. Take your time and learn the markets. Don't get in the car the first day you get a license in a new place and buy some Zillow leads and think that you're going to go off and get the deal of the century. 
you know, check the hot sheets a hundred times a day. Go out, preview the properties, get to know the agents because those are going to be the guys that you're working with. Get to know the areas, meet the people in the HOAs, uh, learn where all the local businesses are, learn where all the schools are at. Because these are things that people are going to ask you. If you're not prepared, what what value do you bring, do you bring to the table than just a good conversation? You know what I yeah. mean? People want a good conversation, but they also want someone that can actually help them, not someone that they're going to just be friends with, if that makes any sense. They want both. Yeah. Yeah. They want a yeah. professional that like knows what's going on and knows where the school zones are and, you know, what streets are, you know, quicker to get out of town and, you know, like the little things like that, which all that stuff's kind of like tough to learn, like on the spot. You know what I mean? Like it takes time to learn. How long did it take you to like, are you comfortable yet? Like you've been there for two years. Are you still learning the area and figuring out those things or how so long I did it take like, you to learn this? I feel like every day there's something new just because we have so much going on, you know, in the greater Houston area, there's always new stuff. There's always new roads. So you have to stay with it. So I'm never, I never know it all. I think I could probably work here 50 years and never know it all just because it's such a, a big area. But um, I stay up to date on that stuff. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not sitting inside my house waiting for deals yeah. to fall in my lap. If I don't have anything going on, I'm going out and I'm learning. All, even yeah. I'm learning about the new development being built down the street, meeting those people, staying up to date. So, so yeah. you drive around and talk to people. Is that your strategy there? Uh, when I'm learning the area, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or like, or like when you're learning the development down the road, or is that you making a call to somebody you know is involved, or are you driving over there and talking to people I on just site? Over and talk to all of them, introduce myself. So I'm Melody with Weicker Realtors. You know, mm -hmm. I'm an experienced agent, but I just moved here. What can you tell me about this? And then you just yeah. get the whole rundown, and they're happy to work with you and let you know all that stuff because the guys that work for the developers need us anyway to bring yeah. the buyer. So, right. So it's so there. So you're talking to the agents that represent the developer, the yep. listing agents. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. why not? Let's learn about the pro the new product that's coming out right down the road. And yep. I mean, you know, I mean, that's that's your new inventory. You know, like you might as well know everything you, there is to know about it. All the time, all the time. And even when I get listings, this is going kind of off the subject, but you know, I'll do reverse prospecting and call those agents that the listings have been sent out to. You could probably see it in your MLS also introduce yeah. myself, say you sent it out to your, your client or whatever. If they want to see it, let me know if you can't make it. You know mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm always doing that, always meeting new people and always whether they're in the industry or not. So. So, so that brings up a really cool little strategical move there. So what, so what you, when you list something and then yeah. you get the email about the reverse prospecting that goes out to other agents, buyers yeah. that they had automatic emails going out to you call those agents Every and, just single say, one of them. Yeah. and just say, how are you doing and stuff? Yeah. And I just say, Hey, you know, I've got a listing, you know, at three, seven, one, four Fallon court. I see you sent it out to a client. They've got it saved as a possibility. You know, let me know if there's something I can do to get this guy in. So you, you can show the property. I mean, I always make it easy for them because at the end of the day, it all creates the same thing. We just want to get the job done. Right. You know, God, so. you, don't know how, you do not know how much I love that. Like, cause you're not only helping your seller try to sell that property and mm -hmm. following up with a possible lead. Right. But you're mm -hmm. also simultaneously developing a further relationship with local agents. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. letting them know that you're here to help them that, you know, like what, wouldn't you say like local agents are just as important as your clients? Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, um, we want clients for life, but they do come and go. And guess who's still left when they go? It's all of mm -hmm. us. You know what I mean? And when the markets get strong and there's multiple offers, they're going to say that Melody, she's got her stuff together. I might not be the highest and best offer, but they know I'll get the deal closed and that I'm solid. So it helps. It just does, you know? Yeah. I think developing like really deep relationships with the local agents is, is such a key thing. Like I, I actually wish I could do more of it. Um, I throw it in there as much as I can. I follow up with agents who show my properties as much as I can just to, just to like create some engagement with them and let them know I care and I want to talk to them and stuff. So Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's really good stuff too. So 
Okay. So like going forward, 2019, mm -hmm. what is your, what's your thing? What, what do you, what do you want to accomplish? What's your, what's your goals? What's your aspirations? Yeah. 10 million in sales. What'd you do last year? Uh, just a little over five. Okay. It, you know, it's only my second year here, so I'm not beating myself up. Plus, I, I took a lot of vacation last year. So, you know, I kind of did that to myself. But um, I didn't have a bad year, like I said, for only my second year in Texas at, at I think all. that's incredible. Uh, What's the yeah. average price? Uh, my average price is around 315 Mine's 350 so we're pretty, pretty close. Yeah. So... Okay, you've been there two years. So when you got there, the market, you got there in 2017, right? And the market kind of exploded that year, right? Uh, well, yes, we actually moved here in 2016, but I didn't become licensed here until 2017 because I had so much overflow from Hawaii. And like I said, I was learning the area. I didn't want to go out and fail myself, you know, on top of other clients. So, yeah. yeah. So when I started working here, um, the market was very balanced. It still kind of is, if you want to know the truth. There's enough inventory for everyone that's in like that like three to five hundred thousand dollar price range. Uh, mm. But like two fifty and below, that stuff goes in a day. So uh, right. there's not much of that. So right. Well, what what I was getting at is is like 2017. The market kind of like exploded somewhat. Like it really was a good year. 2017. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, and then 2018, did it kind of flatten out, if you will, over there? I think that it was hard for people that weren't working because it interest rates have, you know, they keep ticking up, you know, they have been for a year and a half. I mean, and mm -hmm. as interest rates tick up and where we live, there's some really, really high property tax rates. So you put yeah. that combination in and People have to qualify. They have to be comfortable with it. And it did slow down a little bit. Uh, but 2018 was still a great year for me. Uh, I don't want to brag, but I was the top salesperson in my office that year. It wasn't hard. You know, it slowed down, but I just kept doing what I was going to do. No, 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 no. Like you made it through the crash the first time. Like you're going to, you, your sales are going to continue yeah. to be good. I'm not saying that. Like I did the same numbers in 17 that I did in 18, which to me was, I was happy with because yeah. it, it kind of, the market kind of lost some steam. Mm -hmm. And of course I'm like coaching, writing, speaking all over the place. So oh, like yeah. to do the same numbers, I was pretty happy with that. But yeah. like, oh, like the market though, like, like, you know, like the market slows and flattens and prices, you know, will flatten out and go down and go up and they'll do different things. Like, did the prices flatten out is what I'm saying there. Yeah. It kept going up in 18. No, uh, but they just remain. Well, they remain the same. I guess. Yes. If that's what you're trying to say. They didn't go down. They, they were right. Yeah. 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 We had a little more business though. You could look at even my colleagues and all their business picked up in 2017 through 2018 because of all the, the oil and gas, the relocation stuff. It's okay. Okay. Very, so yeah. yeah. Exxon brought in like another four or 500 employees uh, mm. and Anadarko was moving people in and out. So he still remained brisk, but the the median sales price did not go up. No. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> there was that too. So that put yeah. a dent in Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Forgot all about that. Yeah. Ugh. Pretty big thing. <laughs> that was a serious situation. Yep. Yeah. Um, Cool. Yeah. No, here, like transactions and prices are about flat from what they were in 18, which is not bad. I mean, in 17, which is not bad because that was 17 was a really good year. Um, you know, like I, nobody knows where the market's going. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? No, it like, doesn't matter it mm -mm. at all. I'll tell you, none of us have a crystal ball. I think the market comes in cycles. I don't think we're in for this big crash. I have a lot of friends on the West Coast that are saying it's quiet. You know, there's a shift and this and that. At the end of the day, it's not going to be like how it was in 2007 or 8, but it will slow down. This is the, the life cycle for real estate. You can look at it. It's been like that since before you and I were born. You know, I mean, it, yeah. it is. So, yeah. The market slow, like the market doesn't slow down. Agents slow down. You know what I mean? Exactly. 
like no. they like see prices dip in and less buyers out there and they just like get scared and run for the hills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're like when the market crashes, there's so much urgent business because the buyers that come out of the woodworks and want to buy when it's cheap, they're mm -hmm. like wanting to buy right now before it goes up. Mm -hmm. You know, and like the mm -hmm. sellers have to sell. They're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yep. There's all this urgent business happening and you know, the agent, most of the agents leave the business and leave all that for us. It's crazy. Um, so you're wanting to do 10 million this year. Do you, yes. what is your, what just to kind of maybe finish it up and see if you have any questions for me, what is, what are you going to do differently or what are you doing anything differently or what is your plan to get there to, to 10 mil? So what I'm going to do differently this year is work more, if that makes any sense. Like I okay. told you last year, I took a lot of vacations. Yeah. I did a lot of traveling. So there'll be a lot less traveling and a lot more while spending. So that, that's really all I'm going to do that's different. Okay. Hey, Melody, stop going to the beach as much, you know, <laughs> and it'll happen because it's, you know, kind of like, the market cycles, I can say I come in cycles. So there have been years where it's like 15, 20 million, then 5 million, then 10 million, then seven. You know, I mean, it just depends on how much I put into it. So. That's it. That's it. It's all predicated on how much you want. So, so you're going to do some prospecting that you didn't do last year? Yeah, I told you, I'm going to get back on those expireds. I haven't done it in a long time. So I'm kind of rusty. Yeah. Back. So, yeah. You should try circle prospecting too. Yes, I should. I should. I will. I'll like, try to I'll add that. Because like circle prospecting is calling, you know, a subdivision or something and like no agents are doing like, like there's like 10 agents calling each expired. You call the expired and they're like, oh God, another agent. But you circle prospect and the owner's like, well, how are you doing, Miss Agent? You know what yeah. I mean? They're like really happy to see you and talk to you and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a, I, I like what I like. I think the best combination is to circle prospect and do expireds and kind of mix it up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's kind of my thing. I've, I've kind of come into that. Like I built my whole business on circle prospecting. Right. Like I did, I, I did very little expired and all that stuff. But now that I'm where I'm at, like it's fun to me to like do expireds, you know, yeah. because like I don't care if I get it or not. Like I know I can just call 50 more people and yeah. like somebody's going to like me, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So, cool. Was well, there anything else I can do for you? No, this was just, it was awesome. I'm just glad that we got to speak. So, yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. If there's anything in the world I can ever do for you, um, you know, or whatever, definitely reach out. I'll be glad to, you know, help in any kind of way. Let me see if anybody has any questions on the live feed real quick before we get out of here. Let's see. I think everybody was just kind of enjoying the uh, the conversation. Ten million is a good number. Somebody said ten million. You go. Let's see. Yeah, no real questions or anything, which is fine. I really, basically, wanted to bring you on because I loved what you said in that DM on Instagram, and I just wanted to like get somebody on the program that kind of had the same views as me. And it was really cool listening to your story, you know, going through the crash and realizing that you got to switch it over and and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah. Any last words or anything? No. You know, I mean, well, I guess I do have one last word. You know, just do what Ricky's doing. Do what I said. Just be good to people and people will be good to you right back. Stop selling. Be yourself. And you will build a great business. So, yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much for, for doing this and good luck on your, on your 10 million this year. Let me know. Let us know how it goes. I will. I will. Thank you, Ricky. All right. Okay. Bye guys. Bye.